I will uh, we'll go ahead and turn it over to Coach Roberts, allow him to address you guys with a brief opening statement, and then open it up for questions. Great. Thank you, Jerry. Great to be here today. Good to see several familiar faces here today. Uh, we are very excited about Saturday. There is no doubt uh, about the, the excitement and enthusiasm for our game and home for the first time in a long, long time to start a season against the Army. Uh, I've said this uh, several times throughout fall camp and really feel like it uh, is going to come through for us that we're going to have a better football team than we've had in any of the previous years uh, that I've been at Arkansas State. Uh, and we have an opportunity Saturday to, to show that type of improvement, show that type of uh, expectations uh, with a very good Army football team coming into town. Army has eight starters back on both sides of the football. Uh, there are a whole lot of similarities between their football team and ours. Uh, when you look at what uh, each football team has coming back, they lost a four-year starter at quarterback. And then two tailbacks, uh, Scott Wesley and Carlton Jones, have really carried the load for them last year. And obviously, we will be starting a new quarterback uh, and a new stable of running backs uh, this Saturday as well. They lost the tight end. We lost the tight end. Uh, we did lose a couple of offensive linemen, but they and they have all of their linemen returning uh, that played any significant uh, game contributions for them last year. So. Uh, there is a, a little bit of difference there, but as far as the key elements coming back and the skill positions, uh, we are just about on the same level that they are. Don't know a whole lot about their quarterback, uh, other than he's played very, very few snaps. Uh, tall, uh, big guy. Uh, we've heard uh, things like drop back, passer type of guy. We've also heard that he runs the option extremely well, so we won't really know exactly what to expect until Saturday when they line it up. As far as tailbacks are concerned, uh, I think there will be some differences in what they've done in the past at that position. Uh, they had two big, very, very strong running backs last year, and now they're going with a guy that's 175 pounds or so uh, that uh, has been labeled as quick and uh, has the burst, uh, can make you miss type of guy. Uh, don't know if that's going to change a little bit of what they do offensively or not. Defensively, we're both in the same boat. Both of us have eight starters back defensively. Um, most, all of us, uh, both teams uh, return three of their four starting defensive linemen, all of their linebackers, and a couple of guys in the secondary. So uh, we are very, very similar to them defensively. And that's really where the similarities end. Uh, when you get into the kicking game, they have everybody back, and we have nobody back. They have both kickers, the, the kicker that started for them in 2004 uh, before he was injured, and then the kicker that started every ball game for them last year in 05. They have their punter back, their deep snapper back, their holders back, everybody back. And uh, obviously we're breaking in a whole new set uh, there as far as the kicking game and the specialists are concerned. So we do understand that uh, we got whipped last year 38 to 10 up in New York uh, playing at West Point. Army deserves a ton of credit for that victory. They played extremely well, and we played awful. Uh, we played uh, very bad. We did not uh, execute. Thought the effort of our kids was very good, uh, but we did not play with the mental execution that we have to have in order for us to be successful. Obviously, our athletes have watched that film now several times uh, in the last week and a half as they have uh, prepared for this ball game. We fully expect a much better execution this Saturday. Great opportunity for us to open up the season, the 2006 season in the state of Arkansas for the first time in a long time in Indian Stadium. Uh, I think as our record has proven, we take a tremendous amount of pride in what we do in Indian Stadium. Uh, undefeated last year, won 5-0 in Indian Stadium, and uh, we start off right off the bat with a big time test. With Army coming to town. Any questions? Talk about Ricky Arnold, uh, local guy making his first start. How do you, you know, make the jump? Well, I'm very excited about Reginald Arnold. Uh, he's a redshirt freshman that's never played in a Division One game before. Um, so you do have some sense of concern or, or anxiety when you're putting the ball in the hands of a freshman like that. Uh, 
But knowing his character, knowing his work ethic, knowing how he's prepared for this football game, uh, that seems to calm you down a little bit as well. Uh, Reginald did some things in the spring and through fall camp that you normally don't see freshmen do. Uh, most freshman running backs are very good at running the football, and when they're getting the football, they know exactly what to do and all that, but uh, when it comes time to pick up a blitz or in the pass protection adjustments or uh, pass route adjustments that they have to make, and Reginald has really excelled at that. We're looking forward to him doing that full speed on Saturday. Uh, looking forward to all of our backs having a, an opportunity to make a significant impact in a game, something they haven't had an opportunity to do. You mentioned the, uh, the back situation, and obviously you took a loss to Chris Easley, but right now, in terms of overall depth, who, who are you going to be looking at in terms of maybe spelling Arnold, maybe coming in for that? What's the rotation look like? Well, we've got three backs that will probably carry the football for us uh, Saturday. When we're in a two-back offense, it'll be Reggie Arnold and Chris James. Uh, Chris is a, a guy a lot like Reggie, uh, low to the ground, very powerful runner, uh, guy that can run over you. Uh, he's a guy that with, when he's had opportunities, like last year, he's made the most of those opportunities. I think last year he touched the ball once and uh, had a 26-yard touchdown. Uh, he was leading the nation for touchdowns per carry and yards per carry there for I guess five minutes or so last year. So, uh, he will carry the load, and then when we're in a one-back offense, Orrin O'Neill will be added to that mix with them. And Orrin is obviously a loaded fullback, and uh, in our one-back stuff, uh, you know, 250-something pounds, uh, Orrin can really pound on you know, out of our one-back stuff. The way you plan to use Orrin this year, has that changed any from last year? Uh, yeah. It has. Last year we had Shamar and Antonio that were going to get the majority of the carries, uh, whether we were in a two-back offense or a one-back situation. And now uh, with our depth situation, Oren, while he could have done that and been very good at it last year, we felt like we had guys that were capable of doing that uh, already on tailback. back. So he's been working on it uh, now for about three years, and he's had a handful of carries. Uh, out of one back in game situations, and now he'll get an opportunity to have more of them. So, can you tell us a little bit about the wide receivers? I know we had a freshman that came in late. Is, is it, uh, I, mean, I watched him in a scrimmage here in Little Rock, and I mean, he showed his speed and his ability. So, is that something that you would consider for this game? Where we are preparing him to play, that does not mean that he will play. A little bit later in the luncheon, I'm going to share some video and have about eight to ten plays, and for some reason, he's on two of those plays for making big plays. And uh, I was just I was at the touchdown club meeting yesterday in Jonesboro. And, uh, we had a huge crowd uh, there for our event there, and I showed them that. And I said, I'm not sure if we're going to play him or not, and I heard about half the crowd say, if you don't, you're stupid. <laughs> uh, but at the same time, they're not seeing all the mistakes that he makes either. And he's a freshman wide receiver who's extremely talented, but at times does not do the right thing and you have those negative plays. Uh, but we were going to this ball game with him being prepared. He's working extremely hard. He's an intelligent young man. Uh, there's just so many things to learn about angles, uh, especially in the blocking aspect of being a wide receiver, about angles and about who you have and who the quarterback's reading and all those types of things that it's uh, it's more difficult than you would think just tossing the ball. And, and obviously, some of you will see today that he can really go when he has the ball in his hand. It was that, we want to make sure that his experience is a positive experience, and that means bringing him along slowly, not just throwing him into the fire with the entire offense. But, he was a late addition. How did, he, how did you come about getting him? Uh, we knew about him early uh, during our recruiting process, uh, wanted to recruit him, uh, did not know if he was going to make it academically. Ended up uh, working extremely hard to, during his senior year and made it with ease uh, with all his test score and his grades. And we were fortunate enough to get in a recruiting battle with uh, three or four other schools and, and win that recruiting battle. Getting back to running back, uh, how does Preston Brown figure into uh, all this? Uh, Preston will be an emergency type guy this week. Uh, Preston has probably missed 18, 19 practices uh, with a hip injury, uh, and he will be prepared. 
but hopefully we will not have to put him in the situation. And if we do play him, he will definitely only do things that we know that he's capable of doing, not the, the entire offense. Do you see him as potentially redshirting then, or, or? You know, that's a decision that we have to make uh, every ball game. Yeah. You know, if he doesn't play, then yeah, he's redshirted for at least another yeah. week. Uh, you never know how that's going to unfold. Uh, we will do everything we can to win a ball game. But we don't want to put an individual in a game for three, four, five plays, and then all of a sudden he's lost a year. I know you said it doesn't necessarily matter, but I'm just curious. Do you have a determination yet who will take the first snaps at quarterback? On yeah, Saturday? Travis Hewitt will start the ball game for us. Uh, met with those guys Tuesday night. I explained to them that uh, the competition has been very healthy for our football team, and they both have proven that they deserve an opportunity to play, and they both will play. Uh, we would like to play them. If we were sitting down and, and making a master plan, we'd like to play them equal amounts this Saturday. Uh, unfortunately, the game of football does not allow you to make a plan like that. Uh, we will not disrupt the rhythm of one of them. Uh, if one of them gets in and gets in a rhythm and we're really clicking down the field, then we're not going to disrupt that rhythm just to say that both of them played 34 plays each. And they understand that they have to perform when they get that opportunity, and and we'll go from this ball game with uh, grading procedures to decide who deserves to play the most or start uh, from here on out. But they both have shown that they can move our football team in practice. And neither one of them has done it in a game. If you could just kind of elaborate, maybe on what it was that Hewitt might have done to kind of push himself ahead for now, maybe what he saw. Uh, Travis has been a little bit more consistent uh, in his play reading his keys, putting the ball where it needs to be, uh, making sure that he's reading strong when he needs to be reading strong, understanding coverages, that type of stuff. Uh, that does not in any way indicate that Corey did not do that as well, but Travis has been a little bit more consistent in that. Travis does have a, a handful of snaps in a game under his belt, uh, although they have not been in the type of situations he's gonna be in Saturday. Uh, that led to that decision as well. Both of them deserve to play, and both of them will get an opportunity. Coach, I just want to ask you a little bit about the, the turf. You got the new turf in, and I know it's an exciting time in Arkansas State history. I mean, it's been 20 years, you know, kind of mid-range, and all of a sudden we win the conference, and everything's you know going great. And you know, it's just Little Rock. Everybody's all talking about Arkansas State football. So, kind of tell us about the atmosphere of what we're uh, expecting. I haven't seen the turf yet. Yeah, let me know what's going on there. Well, there are two reasons for that excitement, I think. One is we did uh, exceed expectations last year. And two, we're undefeated right now. Uh, <laughs> and so that uh, helps as well. Uh, but there is a lot of excitement. Uh, I know in Northeast Arkansas and Central Arkansas, I've had an opportunity to be down here on several occasions at several events. There is a lot of excitement. Uh, and I think that excitement is genuine, and, and I think it's realistic. We're going to have a better football team. Our schedule is extremely difficult with eight games uh, away from Jonesboro. That's uh, going to be tough, uh, but we have to find a way to overcome that. Uh, as far as the turf is concerned, it is absolutely gorgeous. I, I don't know if I've ever seen a field that's more beautiful than the field that we have an opportunity to play on Saturday. And it's very functional. Uh, our kids have worked uh, on it the last uh, four practices, I guess found it to be very reliable. Ron Carroll feels like we will cut down on our 22 surgeries from last year and because of the surface. It's a very fast surface, but it's also a very soft surface. So we're very excited about that. I think it's everybody that sees it is going to love it. This type of uh, underground drainage system that's going to sparse the water when it, if it does rain. Right. Where do you feel like you're at in the kicking game compared to last year? Uh, that's a great question. I think in practice we're better than we've ever been. And uh, emphasis on in quotation marks or whatever you want to put on in practice. Joshua Rocco has been very, very consistent in practice from you know, 38, 40 yards in. Uh, feel really good about that, but he has done it again. Uh, Brett Trable, uh, when he hits the football, uh, which is most of the time, very, very impressive. 
very impressive. He averaged well over 40 yards throughout fall camp in live situations. Uh, he's got a lot of 55s, 58s, 59s, and he's got some 17, 18s sprinkled in there with him. But uh, he can really hit the football. So we'll kick off, guy. No, uh, hopefully Brian Sheffield will kick off for him. And hunting? Brett Trevor. Okay. What do you mean by hopefully? Uh, injury situation. Oh. Yeah. Hopefully he'll kick off for us. If he can't go. We'll be very creative. <laughs> that mean all side kicks? <laughs> no, not necessarily all side kicks. Our, you know, our guys take a tremendous amount of pride in our special teams. Uh, last year we were number one in the league. And kickoff coverage, and uh, Eric had a big part in that, had 11 touchbacks on the year. We hope to have more touchbacks than that, but we hope to be able to cover very well as well. Can you talk a little bit about the uh, offensive and defensive line, the depth that you have in those positions? Uh, we have some depth in the offensive line when Tanner's healthy, and uh, hopefully Tanner will be healthy uh, from here on out. Uh, obviously, he missed a, a little over a week of fall camp with an AC separation, but uh, when he's not in the lineup, things change because you have to move guard to center, you have to move tackle to guard, and uh, you really lose more than one player depth-wise there. Uh, but we feel good about our starting depth right now. We will probably play 10 offensive linemen throughout the course of the ball game Saturday. Uh, defensive line, probably eight. We feel really good about our, our first two sets of, of ends. Uh, with uh, four guys playing at those two positions, uh, Reggie Green and Brandon Rollins will start, and then Alex Carrington and Rob Ramage will, will play uh, some Saturday. Inside, for those two positions, we really have three that we're just uh, really excited about. Uh, Prince Hickman and Curtis Bonds, uh, and then Jamaro James, and then Jeremy Wallace has moved from outside down inside the three technique, and he's continuing to learn it. <laughs> continuing to learn and he's going to be very good but we need him to really come along quickly to give us that fourth guy inside. 